Good new time zone and reality everyone. My name is Vel here at Science Away and today is the third day for Science Education Week, sorry, Computer Science Education Week or more popularly known as Hour of Code Week. So like I said, today is day three and we have another Hour of Code lesson for you all. So today we're going to be learning how to code a blinking LED with Arduino, which is, well, it's say we're doing that in Tinkercad. So if I remember correctly, because it's been a second, Arduino is a, let's see, a physical product. Well, it can be physical or digital, but it is a product that you can use to bring things to life. So for example, Arduino can be used to program robots, different inventions to make them move or light up or blink. Hopefully that explains it pretty well. We're going to be using a digital one today. I don't have a real one, so it's only going to be digital, but you can use this lesson to do something physical as well. And I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I do want to mention just like the past couple of days, while we are doing lesson from Tinkercad and we're using Tinkercad, this is not sponsored by Tinkercad or Autodesk. So they're not paying me to do this. They didn't ask me to do this. I'm doing this because coding is awesome. I love coding and it's our code even though I am a tier cat and fires I remember, but because of that fact, I especially want to do tier cat first. So we're gonna go ahead and get started now. One of the lovely people at tier cat and I believe on our desk told me if you were here yesterday, we had a little bit of problem reading the instructions and getting our code to work. So she told me that they're more so a, the one on Instructables anyway, are more so just a guide. So it's like an overview of what you're going to be doing. Some of the more detailed steps and better pictures are in the PDF. Now I tried downloading them, but it's a premium feature, which I don't have at the moment. But the good thing is, even though I don't have that at the moment, uh, this lesson is a Tinkercad lesson. So if you don't know, Tinkercad is a 3D modeling program or a 3D modeling CAD software where you can make different 3D models and then you can print them. So they also have circuits, which is what the Arduino part is. So you can incorporate your 3D models with, with the circuits. So you can make some of your models light up, they can move and do all kinds of things. Or you could just strictly do circuits. And of course there is the now code blocks, but Tinkercad also has lessons on their website, so you don't always have to come to Instructables to get some of the lessons. You can go to, I believe it's here. You have to be signed in to Tinkercad. The account is free, but you do have to be 13 years and older. If you're not, then you have to have a parent sign on for you, and then it'd be like a moderator for you. But you go to Learn, and usually you start in the 3D section, but if you go to Circuits, there's Starters, which just get you started with the editor for Arduino and get you familiar with it. Then you have some lessons that teach you different things in there as well. I, oh, there we go. I was like, it's not loading. So there's introduction to a breadboard, which is not Arduino. So this is not an Arduino editor, but you can use Arduino, but it's more so the circuits. So it's, it's the hardware, it's the wires, it's the LEDs, it's the resistors, it's the batteries, it's the breadboards, it's the button, it's all that kind of stuff. It's the innards and the wirings of robots and computers and inventions and all kinds of gadgets. But if you go to products, you can actually find the tutorial right here. So I actually have it open. So we are gonna be using this version. You could, for example, go to your dashboard and go to circuits and then follow along that way. But since this, this uh, Instructables is technically just a guide, I'm gonna be using both. So hopefully this outlines it a little more. I have played around in circuits just a little bit. I went through a lot of their lessons. So hopefully this will, it'll be okay. And hopefully by tomorrow I will have uh, fixed the PDF thing. And by fix, I mean I'll probably get a premium or something. I'll figure it out, I'll ask the question. But yeah, so we're gonna be following along with this. This is a video you can watch, but the instructions, which I need to put in chat. Where is my chat? Uh, I need to find my chat. So as usual, if you want to follow along, that is not the correct thing. Oh, that is. Okay. If you want to follow along, the instructions are in the chat. Whether you're on Mixer, Pegarta, or YouTube, it's right there. And as always, you want to come and either watch a live stream later, if you're joining us a little later and you missed a few things, or you just want to look at it later, maybe you don't have time to look at it right now, 
this will be on my YouTube channel as a permanent video, so it's not temporary like it is on Mixer and Picardo. It will permanently be on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash science her way. And there'll be a whole playlist for our code 27, 2018, just like there is one for 2017 as well. Now that's out of the way, the instructions are in chat. Just make sure you go to Tinkercad. And we're gonna go, on, we're gonna go, go ahead and get started. So once again, I am on a little bit of a time constraint, so I'm, I am gonna be reading through some of this, but I'm gonna skim over it and see if, I, if it's important for the coding, maybe later. But I do encourage you to go back and read through this in full if I do end up skipping something. I know step five is how to do this with a real Arduino, which I will not be covering since, like I said, I do not have a real Arduino with me, but it's cool that you can do this if you actually have the board in real life. All right, so let's learn how to blink an LED light emitting diode i'm not sure i've never seen this before forgive me using arduino's digital output if you're new to arduino this is a great place to start we'll connect an led to the arduino uno and compose a simple program to turn the L led on and off so quick question let me know in chat or even just in the comments below do you see led or do you say led <laughs> i'm just curious you can follow along virtually using to your cad circus which is what we're going to be doing over here you can even view this lesson from within Tinkercad, if you like. Explore the sample circuit and build your own right next to it. Click Start Simulation to watch the LED blink. You can use the simulator anytime to test your circuits. Tinkercad Circus is a free browser-based program that lets you build and simulate circuits. It's perfect for learning, teaching, and prototyping. So, if you want to follow along with your physical Arduino or compatible board, you'll need a USB cable and a computer with the free Arduino software or plugin for the web editor, web editor installed, and an optionally, an optionally a single LED. So, the first one, and this is actually a little GIF, I believe, or YouTube video. So, step one, LED resistor circuits. So, I'm going to be going back and forth. Technically, I probably could just follow this one. Oh, because this is the same thing. Kind of, you know, let's, let's learn how, let's see. So we can zoom in and out. We can move things around. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure if we can select multiple things. No, but we can move our workspace around, which is really nice and zoom out. So we can build our own. I think I'll follow this one and then reference this. Well, we'll follow the guide inside of the Tearcad editor or circuits editor, excuse me. And then we'll go back and reference here because right now there's a lot of information which is good to know but we'll go back and forth between it so that'll be how we're going to be doing that today so we're, i think we are going to build our own next to it so what you're going to do is if you're in the components and you're in basic you're going to grab your arduino uno okay and then click Start Simulation to watch the LED blink. You can use the simulator anytime to test your circuits. So we're going to test Start Simulation, and it's initializing. And notice how our LED is blinking. Let me zoom in on that for you all. It is blinking, right? So, and you can see it's plugged into the computer, so it's on. We're going to stop simulation. Well, not yet. Sometimes they have us leave it on. So I'm going to reference this. So let's go here. The LED's legs are connected to two pins on the Arduino. Ground in pin 13, which is right here, and that's ground. The component between the LED and pin 13 is a resistor, which helps limit the current to prevent the LED from burning itself out. Without it, you'll get a warning that the LED might burn out soon. It doesn't ma matter whether the resistor comes before or after the LED in the circuit or which way, which way around it goes. The colored stripes identify the resistor's value and for the circuit. Anywhere from 100 o OHMS to, I think it's ohms, I'm not sure, to 1000 OHMS will work great. The LED on the other hand is polarized, which means it only works when the legs are connected in a certain way. The positive leg called the anode <laughs> usually has a longer leg and gets wired to power, in this case coming from your Arduino's output pin. The negative leg, called the cathode, which 
which uh, with its shorter leg connects to ground. So 13 in this case is the power we are using for the longer leg and ground is technically the negative uh, outlet. In the tenure cast circuits component panel, drag a resistor and an LED to the, onto the work plane. Edit the resistor's value by adjusting it to 220 OHMS. So we're going to find a resistor, which is right here. Oh, I clicked something. I don't know what I've done. Oh, the simulation's still going. Let's turn that off. <laughs> we're going to grab a resistor. Now the interesting thing is we could just connect the resistor directly to the Arduino or we could use a wire. I'm pretty sure either way it works the same. And then click once to connect a wire to a component or pin and click again to connect to the other end. So what they're talking about is let's zoom in over here. I can click this end, terminal one, and connect to D13. And there we go. It's not straight, but it's okay. The line went anyway. Uh, let's see here. I've lost my place. There's so much text. If you connected your resistor to the LED's anode, positive, longer, leg, connect the resistor's other leg to Arduino's digital pin 13. So I did not grab a leg. Oh, you drag a resistor and a leg. Yep, yep. I have forgotten that part. So here is the leg. So right here is the anode, which is the shorter leg. And this is the cathode, which is the... Uh, let's go back and look. I don't want to double check. Yep, the positive leg is called the anode. And it's usually longer. Now, technically, I'm looking at them. It's technically... Lengthwise, it's not, but in real life LEDs, yes, they are usually longer. All right, so we also need to adjust our resistor's value. So we click our resistor right here. We can change how many ohms it uses. Now, the only confusing thing is the you don't see words in here called ohms. You just see a K in this weird symbol. But I think that is by default set on ohms. It would be nice if there was a symbol over here to tell me that yes, that's ohms. But, oh, it's okay. And we're gonna change this to 220. Notice how these stripes change, which is very nice. And also the, where is it here? The GIF. It's pretty nice. All right, so between reading that, let's see. If you connected your resistor to the LED's cathode, negative shorter leg, connect the resistor's other leg to the Arduino's uh, ground pin. Create another wire between the unconnected LED leg and pin 13 or ground, whichever is still not connected. So what they're talking about is right here. So I could either connect, we'll do it this way. So what they're talking about is I can either have my resistor on this side of the LED leg, or if we, uh, nope, nope, <laughs> hang on. I believe if you click on a wire and hit your delete key, that removes it. Yep. So what they're talking about is I could also do it this way. I can move my resistor from the uh, D13 pin to ground and connect the resistor to the cathode side instead of the anode side, and it still works. So if you read this, the LED on the other hand is polarized. Oh yeah, so I already read, already read that one. So this really is the same thing, so I probably will mostly follow this one and go back to the other one every now and then. And I think just to stick a little bit more with the tutorial, we are going to move this back and do it the first way. You can also change the wild color just for fun. And we change it to purple instead. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Okay. Extra credit, you can learn more about LEDs in the free Instructables LEDs and Lighting class, which is in the link, which is linked in the Instructables, so you can look at it there. Okay. Alright, so next is only seven steps. Alright. 
Let's go through the simple code blocks controlling the blink by opening the code, the uh, code editor button labeled code, which is right here. You can resize the code editor by clicking and dragging the left edge. Now the funny thing is I've done mine over here, but there's also one over here. And oh, so what's nice is I can look at the already working resistor and see that we just technically need the symbol, not the K in the symbol. So that's very nice to know now. I noticed our stripes. Did you all notice how the stripes were different when I had the K in that symbol? I don't know what it's called, I'm sorry. I had a yellow line instead of brown. Okay, so we're gonna click code. Oh, it's so cool. I've not seen this before. And this has some of the same uh, layout, I was gonna say outlay, layout of code blocks. All right, so the code starts out with two gray comment blocks. No, it doesn't. No, not for mine anyway, but um, which are just notes for us humans to read. The first blue output block sets the built-in LED high, which is Arduino's way of describing on. This output command will activate a 5V signal to anything connected to the specific pin. Next up is a yellow command block that waits for one second. Simple enough. So the program will pause while the LED is on for one second. Next, after another comment, is a blue output block to set the LED back to low or off followed by another second long pause. So you have a nice GIF there. Try customizing this code by changing the wait times and clicking on Start Simulation. You can even add more output and wait blocks to create longer patterns. And then they have a show hint here. Did you notice the small LED flashing on the board itself, which is the little L here? This built-in LED is also connected to pin 13 and is meant to be used for testing purposes without the need to connect any external components. It, it even has its own tiny resistor, soldered directly to the surface of the board. Alright, so I think we should definitely edit the code. And I meant to mention beforehand that I apologize if you hear this little noise in the background. I currently have my 3D printer going and I do have a uh, script set in there so it will pause for me to change filament so I will have to stop whatever I'm doing to change out the filament because I'm not sure how much time I have before it resumes again. So uh, I'll be a little worried that, but I hope you can't hear it. You may be able to hear it. I'm not sure. So wait, I think we should wait three seconds when it's on, but then wait six seconds when it's off. So if we start simulation, and it's initializing, and you can count it in real life. I missed my window, but you can count it and see that, yeah, this is a lot different. Another fun thing you can do if I were to uh, stop the code, you can change the color of your LED. That's the nice thing about it being digital is I wouldn't have to take off the wires and put a different LED on uh, every time I want to see a different color. I can just digitally change this to any color, which is really nice. And I believe this one's working too. Yeah, so I'm editing the code for this one, but I'm guessing the code looks different for each. Ah, okay, here was the code they were talking about. I built mine on the side, so I was a little confused. So in order to edit the code in circuits, you just click on the Arduino you can edit that once. If I click on this Arduino, that's, I clicked on it wrong. This is my code. If I click on this one, this one's different. So this one is still waiting one second each time. So we have a title block comment. And when you comment your code, it just explains what that line of code is doing. Sometimes we have a hundred lines of code or even longer lines of code. Sometimes, sometimes it gets a little confusing. What does this line of code do if you, know, if you can't see it? So commenting on it makes it really easy for people, either yourself or others who are looking at your code to understand what it's doing and what your thought process was. So this program blinks pin 13 of the Arduino. The, it just says the, the built, I'm not gonna edit it, but I just wanna, yeah, the built-in LED. So we can't see that whole thing. I'm not sure how you, how you would go about fixing that, but it's okay. So you just comment, turn the LED on hide, 
oh, turn the LED, LED on, high is the voltage level. And it's only high or low. So Arduino just reads it as a high or low output, but technically for us, that just means on or off. And then turn the LED off by making the voltage low. So the funny thing is I could probably have these work in unison in a way. Okay, so stop, stop, stop simulation. So the first Arduino will have the LED wait six seconds while it's on and wait three seconds while it's off. This one will wait three seconds while it's on and six seconds while it's off. So what this is going to do is hopefully they look like they're turning when you know when one turns on, another turns off in a way. It probably won't work like that. <laughs> I probably messed up my times. Yeah, they both kind of turn off, they both kind of turn on. But one turns off a lot sooner than the other or stays on sooner than the other, depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, sorry, my, my chat doesn't have a notification feature so I didn't know someone was in chat. Hello, Chris Albert mixed it up. Welcome to the stream and thank you for coming. You see a blue blinking dot. Yes, so we're making, I, I, there's so much here. We're making these LEDs blink on and off. So we have a blue one, we also have a red one, but we could also have a green one. Oh, we already have, we already had red and orange. <laughs> so, we're, ah, I'm live streaming. <laughs> I face him. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom. But, um, so we're just doing something very basic of blinking an LED using a resistor and a, an Arduino. And we're just going through this lesson right here. There's also this one as well. But they're both kind of the same thing, so we're somewhat going back and forth between them. I've already done that part, I think. Possibly. We'll see. But uh, I'll try to be, be more mindful of chat. I forgot I had to chat for a second. All right, so when the code editor is open, you can click the drop down menu on the left and select blocks plus text, which I closed it, uh, to reveal the Arduino code generated by the code blocks. All the extra symbols are part of Arduino's syntax, but do not be intimidated. It takes time to learn to write proper co co code from scratch. We'll go through each piece here. You can always use the blocks for comparison as you level up throughout the lesson on lessons on this site. So I believe, let's see, blocks to text. Nope, that's not it. That's almost it. That's to download. That's not correct. That's because I have two of them. I don't need to download the code. See, it's supposed to be right here, but I'm not seeing that option. So for now, I think we're good. But hey, it gives examples right over here. So that's really nice. So this program blinks pin 13 of the Arduino. So this is what this is the commands you would use to make a comment code. So block, blockly or blocky code is just dragging and dropping code. When you are, usually when you get to more uh, intermediate or advanced or a little past beginner stuff, you actually have to type it and use a few more symbols and you don't always drag and drop. So the first section is titled block comment, describing what the program does. Block comments are book ended by an opening slash and asterisk and a closing asterisk and slash so we have void setup pin mode 13 comma output now i'm not experienced in arduino so i can't necessarily explain what all of this code means and why you have to do it this way or that way i do encourage you to look it up though and if you do know why you do it this way please let me know in the comments below uh, next is the code setup, which helps set up things your program will need later. It runs once the program starts up and contains everything within its curly braces. I'm said brackets. Our blink sketch sketches set setup configures pin 13 as an output, which prepares the board to send signals to it rather than listen. And we have this one as well, which is, I can't zoom in on that, but it's okay. 
Well, technically I can. This is just so you all can see what it looks like. I will zoom back out, but it's okay. But see how long this is? Now, not by lines, but more so width. It's very interesting to look at code and see how it differs from the Blockly stuff to the actual text. And see how they're using milliseconds. For us, we're saying, you know, six seconds, but these are milliseconds. A thousand milliseconds is one regular second. All right, so now I'm going to zoom back out or just hit reset. Yay, there we go. Okay. The main body of the program is inside the loop, indicated by another set of curly braces. This part of the code will execute on repeat, so long as the bo board has power. The color text following double slashes are also comments to help make the program easier to understand. The output command we're using is called digital write, uh, and there's a opening and closing parentheses, which is a function that sets a pin high or low, on or off. To pause the program, we'll use delay, which takes a number of milliseconds. And it just said right here, 1,000 milliseconds is one regular second. This is a circuit we think you'll want to make frequently. So it's saved as a circuit starter. Oh, yeah. So if we go to, if I close the code editor, go to components, and you go starters, we have Arduino. And we have Blink. Oh, that's awesome. So there's different kinds of starters for Arduino, which is really nice. So we can technically drag any of these over here and just play with them and edit them and remix them and modify and do all that kind of stuff. Grab the circuit and code combo anytime using the starters starter available in the components panel or the drop down menu and it's the uh, starters and it's Arduino. For a more advanced version of this Arduino code, also check out the blink without delay starter. Ooh, where is that? I found that, oh, right here, it's at the bottom. Uh, which uses the current time to keep track of a blink, to keep track of blink intervals instead of delay. If you added the circuit starter to the existing breadboard circuit work plan, delete the duplicate Arduino board and components by clicking on them and then clicking the trash icon. You can also press the delete button on your keyboard. Programming a physical Arduino optional. Okay, so we are not going through the step because I do not have a physical Arduino, but I do encourage you to go through this if you do have one or a similar or compatible board. Next try. Now that you know how to blink an LED using Arduino's digital output, you're ready to try another Arduino exercise, exercise, exercises that utilize the digital write function. In the, the next lesson, you'll try using a breadboard to add more LEDs and more uh, and code to control. So experiment with this simulation by adding more blocks to create flashing patterns. You can create a program that flashes out a message using Morse. Oh, it said, can you create a program that flashes out a message using Morse code? Now, I don't know Morse code, but that would be cool to try. Continue on with the next lesson about adding more LEDs and using a solderless breadboard. All right, so that is technically the lesson. We've been streaming for almost 30 minutes here. So it is an easy lesson, but like I said in the past live streams, it's not about how fast or how slow or when you finish your arrow code as long as you had fun and you learned something new. Now I'm going through this. So this is this is the same thing. Now what I'm interested is I can't, I could not see where to change that. If I stop simulation, will I, can I, will I be able to change it? Ah, okay, so the problem was during your simulation, you cannot change blocks to blocks plus text or just text. And just to show that it wasn't just me, notice how it, the drop down menu went away. So I couldn't do that. So here's the blocks pl plus text. So we can compare side by side our blocks and then the code right here. You could also just go straight to text. Oh, hang on. Are you sure you want to close the blocks editor? Any blocks you currently have will be lost. No, thank you. So maybe later, but that's pretty cool. And notice how when I said, or you can just click any of the Arduino boards to switch between code. You can also switch it right here because I have two of them on there. So. I want to try, let's go back to blocks for now. I'm going to delete the one I made. Yes. 
Oh, I thought I would delete them all. Okay. I'll just select multiple of them. We're going to try blink without. I've added multiple. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, now that's interesting. Oh no, it is connected. I just messed up. <laughs> Well, I'll get rid of these. Okay. So it says blink without resistor, but I clearly see a resistor. So it's interesting. If we hit start simulation, and I want to look at the code of the, oh, okay. Blink without delay. Turns on and off a light emitting diode or LED connecting oh can I drag this out I want to be able to read all this connected to a digital pin without using the delay function <coughs> sorry excuse me uh, this means that other code can run at the same time without being interrupted by the LED code the circuit uses the onboard LED note most Arduinos have an onboard uh, LED you can control. On the Uno, Mega, and Zero, it is attached to the digital pin 13. On MKR 1000, on pin 6. So that's what it's attached for the MK MKR 1000. LED bulletin is set to the correct LED pin, independent of which board is used. If you want to know what pin the onboard LED is connected to on your Arduino model, check the technical specs of your board at and there's a link right there, which you have access to if you are also in the Tearcat editor. Uh, so it's created 2005 by David A. Mel Mel Melis? I'm not sure, forgive me. Modified, it was modified again, modified again. This code, well, wow, it's a lot of modified by different people. This example code is in the public d domain, which is right here. Constants won't change. Use here to set a pin number. Okay. Now, I really can't explain any of this to any of, I can't explain any of it to, I can't explain it at all, I'm sorry. I was gonna say I can't explain any of it to any of you, but there's too many, but because I'm not an expert in Arduino, I'm still somewhat learning and going through, but the point is we're learning together. So even if I don't understand what some of these things mean or what's the point of it, it's still cool to look at. Now the interesting thing is, and I want to try it, we're going to take, this one has without delay, we're going to modify this one, we're going to stop simulation. simulation. Notice how in the GIF here they have three LEDs connected to ground. I want to try doing the same thing. But of course, instead of three LEDs, we're going to use every single color they gave us, which is only about five of them, but still. Oh, this one has less colors. We're going to modify the original one, never mind. All right, so we're going to drag all of our LEDs out onto our work area. Now, technically, the lesson is done. I can end the stream, but I do have a little bit of time left. So we'll go do this, and then that will probably be the end of the stream. So let's start with the top. Okay, that's green. Well, we can make it a rainbow at least. Okay, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue. No purple? Really? And white. Now... We're gonna leave that. So technically, is it connected to that? No. Yes, okay. And we're gonna make the wires red to say, you know, this is the red one. 
that's the green one, things like that. Except this will always be, we'll do gray. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. So we're gonna connect this one to 12. I'm trying to find orange, yeah, there we go. I've done it wrong, I just realized. And then can you duplicate? Just control D, right? <laughs> no. And then take the yellow one. And we do have to edit our resistors. And I know the wires aren't the prettiest, but it's okay. Because it still works technically. It does technically work. As horrible as the wires look and as broken as they look, it's okay. Also, need to edit the wire colors. The wire colors really have no purpose other than it looks nice. I've done it again. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, this feels wrong. Yeah, you didn't add your resistor. <laughs> nope. And it's supposed to be gray. The wires look so messed up. Uh, I've done it again. <laughs> I realized you didn't grab your resistor. And this should be white. All right, looks messed up, but we're doing this. 220, we know that's supposed to be this symbol. Wrong thing. Okay. Technically, that should be it. But we are going to go ahead and code this differently. So we would obviously have to edit the code after all. After all, I have different pins connected to different things. If I just start, I'm pretty sure they're all going to blink. No, they won't because I didn't tell the program, do it this way. Oh, you know what? I think that's actually the next lesson. <laughs> that may be the next lesson. I could. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, set built in lead. And that's this one, which is connected to pin, to, uh, pin 13. So. So what we have to do, I've had to stop simulation. Set pin, so we need 12. Now what I could also do is have them all turn on individually and turn off individually. So kind of like, you know, red first, then red's off, then orange's on, and just keep going that way. But I think for now, we're going to do it this way. 11 and we're, we go all the way up to 8 okay and then we're going to the, do the exact same thing for the off section
I just hit 12 again. <laughs> no. Okay, this may or may not work. Here's hoping though. <laughs> Yeah, they all turned on. It's hard to see the white one turned on, but you can tell it's on. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I think this is going to be it for the, this hour code lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you do make your own blinking LED or modify however you do it, please be sure to at me. I would love to see what you've made. Did you make them blink like a stoplight, maybe a different pattern? Did you do Morse code with it? That would be amazing. Well, hold it. Uh, I messed up. I was realizing that, you know, hmm, they're not all turning off. <laughs> Let me fix this before I end the stream. Make sure you make your, set your LEDs to low if you want them off. I left them on high. <laughs> there we go. So they should all turn off now. <laughs> Yeah, they all turned off. All right. So yeah, please tweet at me at Scienceway what yours looks like. Send me the link to it or share. I'm not sure if you can, I think we can do a GIF with this. Yeah, no, no we can do a snapshot. I'm not sure if we can do a GIF in circuits, but either way, however you do it, at me on Twitter. I want to see what you've made. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's Hour of Code. Sorry it was a little shorter. We're under an hour here, but Personally, the lesson for me was a little easy, but that's okay. So this is gonna be easy. Some lessons are gonna be a lot harder or, you know, intermediate or whatever it may be. I choose, I still have my 3D printer going. I'm not sure, I don't try to pay attention enough to it. Oh, well. Uh, okay, well, either way, I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check this out. The video of this will be on YouTube at, uh, at Science Away on YouTube. Just www.youtube.com slash science away. It will be in the all hour of code for 2018 playlist. Give me either later tonight or tomorrow to edit the description to include the lesson and uh, just the lesson instructions. Or like I said, you can just go to, once you're signed into your CAD, go to learn, go to circuits and go to projects. It's the first one. Plus it is on the Twitter and I, tweeted about this so it is in there as well either way i hope you enjoyed this i mean this was pretty fun and tomorrow we're gonna be doing another tier cad one after that we're gonna be doing something from code.org and remember i'm going until the 10th of december i have three days where i'm not sure which hour of code to do so if you have an hour of code you want me to do on stream and go through it with you or show other people Tweet at me or leave comments on my past, and by past I mean the last two hour codes to let me know which hour code you want me to do. I'm not doing hour codes I did in 2017. There's a place on my, on my YouTube channel again with that. So you can see all the hour codes I did and make sure you're not suggesting ones I've already done. I'm only doing new ones this year. So yes, and that should be everything. I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming and I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm gonna see it turn around one more time. <laughs> Yeah, all right. All right, I'll see you all later, or technically tomorrow. Bye.